Hello and welcome to Container Bytes. My name is Mofi, a developer advocate at Google focusing on AI on GKE. And I have a very special guest with me. Thanks, Mofi. Uh, Brandon Royal, I am a product manager here at GKE, focused on all things AI on GKE. In the last video in this series, Brandon showed us how to serve a large language model on GKE. In this video, we'll see how to add additional capabilities to your large language models and serve that using GKE. Brandon, I understand you're teaching us about RAG today. What does RAG stands for? Yeah, yeah. Last time we talked a little bit about inference using large language models to do simple inference and in, in actual serving uh, via an API endpoint. RAG or retrieval augmented generation is essentially a technique by which you can ground or add context to, to a prompt using a large language model. And so today we're going to talk specifically about how you can combine large language models with different techniques of RAG to provide better responses and more contextual responses of your AI model and do that all in Kubernetes. So using the Kubernetes skills that you already have and you know, platforms that you might already have in place uh, to serve both the inference components, the large language model, as well as the retrieval augmented generation components. And specifically, we'll be talking about one of the tools that you can use in retrieval augmented generation called Langchain. Brandon, we talked about inference last time, and we saw how it easy it was to deploy a large language model to Kubernetes, set up an API so that we can consume that API through our application. For someone trying to build these AI applications, what, are, what would be a next step? Yeah, it's a good question. We, again, we talked about something that was relatively simple, taking an LLM and doing inference, just as you said before, and specifically serving that with text generation inference. But generally, the next step in uh, deploying an inference-based application is to add some context. And that's generally where we talk about uh, RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And a lot of you may be thinking, okay, this sounds complex. Now, not only do we have the complexities of Kubernetes and, and AI, but now we have these other techniques called, called RAG. How do we reconcile all those things? So uh, today, what we'll do is break that down into its core concepts, talk a little bit about how RAG works in, in GKE and in Kubernetes, and then we'll show a sort of a brief demo of how all those pieces work together. And so you mentioned something about adding context. So for a large language model, in my understanding, you take a big corpus of data, you train this model. So why this additional context is needed and why is this? Important? Yeah, absolutely. Imagine you're having a conversation with a friend, right? You don't pull every sentence or, or every statement that you have out of thin air. You use context in that conversation. So even though you have a base of knowledge in, in any interaction that you might have with that friend, you specifically want to use the context of the conversation, maybe references to current events or snippets of information around that particular interaction that you want to use in that conversation. So you think about a traditional AI model, any sort of LLM. These are trained on massive amounts of data, just as you said, and they learn to predict the next word or series of words based on a prompt. Now, RAG basically takes this a step further. Instead of just predicting the next word, it also uses a retrieval step that happens before that prediction in order to pull the necessary context that the, the developer, the AI engineer, wants to include in that response. So not only will the LLM provide a human-like informative kind of response, um, it will also include that specific context in the response itself. And you can even provide reference to that context, as we'll show uh, a little bit later on. So would you say RAG is a way to make a model more specialized in doing certain tasks? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you could absolutely use RAG as one approach to creating a specialized functionality for a given model. You can also do fine tuning. We're not talking specifically about fine tuning. And there's obviously a lot of discussions around where do you use fine tuning versus where do you use RAG? RAG is particularly valuable in adding functionality to an LLM specifically for a domain purpose, in particular where that data may not be available in the training set. So something specific to, say, a customer interaction in a chat-based application, the context of that customer and that customer and their previous interactions, some very domain-specific information that you want to include in the response. Those are all good examples of where we might want to use retrieval augmented generation. Yeah, so just to go in a little bit more detail about the process itself, you would have the user inquiry, just like you'd have before. So in a chat-based application, as an example, that would be the user adding a, a prompt into the, ch the chat interface. Now, what's different about a retrieval augmented generation app, there is a pre-step 
by which we then want to essentially search for that prompt first against a search index. Now that search index is generally a vector database, and that's a specialized database that basically understands how to handle language queries. And the vector database itself is then populated using your own contextual knowledge. So that's your internal data that might be specific context of that user's interaction. It could be grounded knowledge from trusted sources that are curated by you as an AI engineer or developer. It could be any number of things, but essentially we want to keep that data fresh and that vector index essentially up to date through a regular process. Once we get the results back, that's essentially where we would combine the response from the vector database into our query, basically using a build template that then is passed over to the large language model. And that's where we essentially get the response back to the user. So it does take an extra pre-step to go and grab that data from the vector index, but ultimately this should be a really fast pre-step and it's going to inject essentially the context into the, the body of the response. And it essentially is going to provide the uh, context into the LLM itself uh, to ensure that we get a contextual response. So what's interesting about this is that for with RAG, we are not losing functionality on the things my LLM already knew, right? Like we're just adding the additional context on the things that we want to add context for. But if my LLM has an additional retrieval augmented generation step for things like sports, when I ask about cars, it still knows what it knows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you still get the full functionality of your LLM. Um, and, and there's an element of prompt engineering. For those of you familiar with prompt engineering, it's basically structuring your prompt in a very specific way. So the LLM knows how to respond appropriately. Your build template is doing just that. You're using the functionality that deep, rich functionality of a large language model, but you're essentially adding context and you can essentially build that into your prompt template. Say, hey, I'm gonna ask you this question, but use this context in your response. And that context can essentially be the response from your vector database or your, your search. So you can essentially inject that context directly into the response and you get the full functionality out of your LLM. So retrieval augmented generation sounds like a really good way to augment uh, our large language model with additional data. How does that all work in practice with Kubernetes? And why should we think about Kubernetes and GKE for that matter to use RAG to improve our large language model uh, context and performance? Yeah, there's a lot of great reasons to use something like Kubernetes for an LLM and a retrieval augmented generation application. You can think of a lot of the components of these applications as just being like stateful apps, things that uh, Kubernetes has got quite good at managing at scale. These are multiple services. They have their own set of dependencies. We need to build them and scale them and deploy them across multiple environments, across multiple regions, potentially. Um, and each one of these uh, sets of boxes or groups of boxes, you can imagine is their own discrete service. And Turns out Kubernetes is quite good at managing that. So all the things that we talked about last time with LLM inference as a service and being able to scale that using Kubernetes, using all the skills and tools that you have today, that also applies to retrieval augmented generation. And now we can independently scale things like the backend job that's going to be doing the, the re-indexing on our vector database. I can scale the you know, different interfaces for the various services that are actually doing the RAG prompt template building, or we can scale various services that are actually handling the, the RAG request and response. So there's a lot of different reasons we would ultimately use it, but same things that we talked about last time, the scalability that we're going to get out of Kubernetes, the reusability of, of all the investments that you've made already in Kubernetes, your build pipelines and deployment pipelines, your monitoring, your logging. Those are all going to apply directly to RAG. And ultimately, it's going to help you as an AI engineer build and deploy production-ready services faster. Brandon, all of this sounds amazing. Could we see an example of this so our viewers have a more context of what this looks like in practice? Sure. Yeah, let's walk through what this looks like in a live demo. What we're going to show is a demo. Imagine you're a Kubernetes operator, and you want to have basically a chat interface that responds with meaningful, helpful information about, say, Kubernetes. Now, what you're seeing on the left here is basically a, a typical LLM where we're exposing a chat-based interface. Uh, and we can ask it a bunch of different questions. It can give us some pretty good responses about uh, Kubernetes, but it's not going to have the context that we necessarily need 
grounded in factual documentation. So what we want to show is going from what is on the left, a basic chat application that is just connected directly to an LLM, to one on the right, which is grounded with actual Kubernetes concepts and documentation using retrieval augmented generation. So let's take a look at that. We can ask a generic question, what is a deployment? Of course, it doesn't have any context. It's not going to know exactly what a deployment is. It's just going to talk about the generic description of what the word means. But even if we were to say, what is a Kubernetes deployment? We'll provide a better response. We won't have to read it word by word, but ultimately it's not providing reference to the documentation. It's not providing a lot of specific contextual information about what a deployment actually is. Now with our retrieval augmented generation application, again, we're now putting a contextual database in front of this response. And we're injecting that into the, the query that's going to the LLM and returning a response. So same thing, what is a deployment? So not only is it going to give us a more meaningful response about what a Kubernetes deployment actually is, it's also going to point to the specific concept documentation that we can use as a reference. So let's talk about exactly how we make this possible. So we'll do most of the work in a notebook. So I can actually show you step by step how you build a retrieval augmented generation pipeline using something like LangChain. Now, in the beginning, what we're going to do is just pull in all of our dependencies. Now I want to connect directly to that Mistral 7B instance. So we'll just use the, the API in order to grab the IP address. And then we'll use the Hugging Face Tech Generation interface uh, to just test our response. So very similar to what we did directly in the chat-based interface, we're providing a query, we're providing some context, and we're going to get the response back just with the vanilla Mistral 7B. And we can see what that looks like. Pretty good sort of response. But let's see if we can make that just a little bit better. Now, in the next step here, we want to provide some sample documentation. And we want to use this information essentially to update our vector index. And that we can essentially use directly within our response. So uh, I've got uh, a set of samples here, which are basically sample URLs to our Kubernetes documentation. We can see what that looks like here on the left. So here's some of our samples. And we've also got a full list of URLs, which we'll use here momentarily. But we can see just a list of URLs, pretty simple. Now I'm going to basically use the web-based loader to read all of that information into a set of documents. And now I'm going to break those into smaller chunks. Each document is pretty large. I can't index all of it at the same time. So I essentially want to break it into you know, smaller chunks. That way I can uh, query based on the individual chunk and return specific responses back. So in this particular case with the, the sample docs that I just provided, uh, those two different documentations, I broke them into 102 different chunks. And we can see what that looks like uh, here in the response. Next thing we want to do is use our sentence transformer embeddings. And this just basically allows us to take that information and load it into the vector index, into the vector database itself. So we can actually utilize that information using natural language querying to get the information back that we need that's most relevant to the query. Next, we'll make a connection directly to our vector database. Now, in this particular case, we're using PG vector, which is a part of uh, Postgres. So Postgres actually has some add-ons that allow for vector index directly within your existing Postgres database. And that essentially gives you a lot of the same functionality with, while also having the SQL-based interfaces that you might be used to in a relational database. So in this case, I'm just going to make uh, a direct connection via the PG vector library to that database. And then what I'm going to do is load all of those embeddings, load all those documents directly to my database. And this will just take maybe a minute or so. We've got, again, a fair amount of information that we're going through in those 102 different chunks. Uh, but this will load here momentarily. All right, so that took just about a minute to complete. Relatively quick, but again, we're only handling a couple of documents. And uh, for those who have uh, you know, a keen eye, you may have noticed that we're specifically using the CPU as a device for our sentence transformers. So we can actually get quite a bit more performance by using a, a GPU for our transformers by, excuse me, using a, a GPU to load up our embeddings and update our vector in, uh, index. And we also want to be able to do that in a way that we can handle larger amounts of data. Again, I'm only doing two documents. What if we had hundreds of documents, thousands of documents, many more? How do we actually do that at scale? So there's actually a better way of doing this using Kubernetes essentially as a scheduler. 
So what we'll do is load a bunch of these documents into a pub sub topic, and then we'll actually scale our training or our indexing jobs based on that pub sub topic itself. So in this case, we'll just, we'll run through this really quickly. We'll go and load up each and every one of those documents into our queue. And again, we're just going to go through each and every document. You can imagine a scenario where as a document is updated, we are then incrementally updating our index, or maybe we have a cron job or something like that, that we update these on a regular basis. So this will go and update here, just take about a, you know, a minute or so to update. All right, so now we've got our queue updated. So we've got a pub sub talk topic with all of those documents loaded and ready to go. Now, let's actually see what that looks like here. We've got a deployment that's running, essentially that is gonna re-index based on the data that's in the queue. So as each document is loaded in the queue, we have basically a service that runs and processes just as we did in the notebook, each and every one of those documents and updates our vector database. Now we can use HPA or horizontal pod autoscaler to basically listen to the queue and scale up and down the number of workers based on the size of our queue. And for those of you curious to learn a little bit more about how HPA works and specifically what it is and how to use it, Mofi, I think you've got some resources you can link in the video description below. Yeah, we already have a video created that's going to be in the description if anyone wants to check out how HPA works in awesome. more details. So we've got our HPA set up and ready to go. And we can see based on the number of documents that we have in the, in the queue, in the topic, we basically can scale up the number of replicas appropriately. So we're scaling up to, to three. Let's look at our horizontal pod autoscaler. We can see based on the number of documents that are in the pub sub topic, it's recommending five replicas in order to process that. And if we look at our deployments now, we should have five instances of our indexer that are running. And those are specifically using GPUs. So those are going to process super fast. All right, so let's look at the logs and we can see each one of these documents being processed. So again, it's gonna pull it out of the queue. It's gonna go through the same exact steps that we just walked through directly in the notebook. And it's going to ultimately update the, the vector index directly within PG Vector. All right, so let's see how this works. So we'll go and do the same query that we just showed earlier. And we'll just do that search against our vector, in, our vector database. And we can see what it comes back with. So it's searching for these blocks of text and it's providing a reference to each and every deployment. We can see that this is essentially some of the context that we can actually get back from each one of the responses. So if you remember the diagram that we walked through earlier, the next step of the process was to actually pull this into a template. We want to use essentially a prompt template so we can provide that context that we're getting back as a response directly with the query into the LLM. And Langchain provides a prompt template uh, way of doing this, pretty straightforward. So I can build essentially my prompt template. So it's going to say things like, you're a helpful assistant who understands Kubernetes concepts. Use the following context in your response. And that context basically is going to be uh, part of what we get back from the vector index or the vector database. And now we're just going to use our retriever that we'll set up. This is just directly from Langchain. So we can basically use our vector database's retriever. We're going to use that the uh, template to pull it together. So let's try the same question that we tried before. What is employment? Let's see what we get for a response. All right, and there we go. So now we got a full response. Now you'll notice this is actually a much more verbose response than we got from the chat app. The chat app itself is basically a, a Python code that runs through, or a set of Python code that runs through the same exact process. So we, in our chat application itself, similar to what we're doing in the notebook, we're running through a set of steps exactly the same using Langchain, using embeddings, we're updating our index. Uh, we're uh, basically going through the, the process of doing the query and injecting that directly into our LLM based on a series of functions that we have. So we'll go through the whole thing. We saw what that looks like in the notebook. So back to our chat application here for a second. The response that we got back is exactly what we just saw in our demo. We got our, our response of what a deployment actually is. And then we've got our reference to our deployment that we got directly from our vector database. So there you go. That's a really simple example of how you build a retrieval augmented generation application using Kubernetes and deploying on GKE. Thank you so much, Brandon. I sure learned a ton. I'm sure our viewers also found a lot of interesting insights about retrieval augmented generation and how to augment your large language models to make it do more than just being a question answer system. If you want to try this out yourself, we'll provide some links to some resources in the description below. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mofi.